uh, for the Rutten Model 76 Voyager. The Rutten Model 76 Voyager was the first aircraft to fly around the world without stopping or, or refueling. It was piloted by Dick Rutten and Jane of uh, Jaeger. The flight took off from Edwards Air Force Base in the Mojave Desert on the 14th of December 1986 and ended 9 days, 3 minutes and 44 seconds later on December the 23rd, setting a flight endurance record. The aircraft flew westerly. Um, to 26,366 statued miles at an average altitude of 11,000 feet. The aircraft was first imagined by Ru Bert Rutten and Rutten's uh, and Bert's brother Dick Rutten in 1980. Voyager was built in Mojave, California over a period of five years, mainly by volunteers working under both Rutten Aircraft Factory and an organization named Voyager Aircraft. Bert Rutten served as the lead designer for the project. The airframe was made of fiberglass, carbon fiber and Kevlar weighed 939 pounds when empty. However, when fully loaded before the historical flight, it weighed 9,694.5 pounds due to the amount of fuel required for the long distance flight. The canard and wing aerofoils were custom designed and the aircraft was analyzed using computu computational flight dynamics. Vortex generators were added to the canard to reduce sensitivity to surface contamination by r rain. Voyager had front and rear propellers powered by separate engines. It was originally flown in, in the 22nd of June 1984, powered by Lycoming uh, 0235 engines with fixed pitch propellers. In November 1985, the aircraft was rolled out, fitted with World Flight engines and air cooled Teledyne Continental 0240 in the forward location and a liquid cooled Teledyne Continental IOL 200 in the aft location. The plan was for the rear engine to be operated throughout the flight. The front engine was intended to provide additional power for takeoff and at the additional part of the flight under heavy load. And this was condensed from the article in Wikipedia. This is the unboxing video for the Rutten Voyager by A model. Picked this kit up a few years ago at Telford and I just feel like it's time to uh, build it. So I have opened this up already a while back as you can well imagine and actually put in some extra bits I want to use for detailing. So let's just take a quick look. Yes, there would normally be uh, one of uh, A models thin plastic bags around this lot so start off with the instructions uh, printed in well this is a short run limited kit this is quite an old a model kit um, so it certainly goes back a few years um, let's just take a look at the instructions five stages Um, pretty limited on the detail on this no cockpit to speak of um, weird construction with the cockpit halves coming together horizontally the booms coming together vertically and the uh, many flying surfaces on this thing floating in one thing to bear in mind is these should be left off and the wing sort of cut a bit if you're building it on its uh, world record flight because these came off the wing tips uh, came off during takeoff when they were dragging on the ground due to the weight of the wing weight of fuel in the wings it comes with a nice little flight stand which I think this model really does need to be displayed in flying condition for its size it's got a huge wingspan and uh, I will be doing a separate flight stand for this. So fairly simple uh, deckling instructions, but I actually think the decals are probably going to be the trickiest thing of all about these. These are old A model decals, and I can see them disintegrating. Hopefully I'm going to be proven wrong on this. So, <coughs> simple colour scheme, it's all white plus the decals so painting is not going to be difficult 
uh, props may well be replaced with a print spinning prop disc. I actually quite like it with the wing, with 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 the winglets. I may well build them, build it with those on there. So, basic instructions. Nothing too alarming about it, except its weird configuration. Uh, it does need a cockpit added to it, though. So let's take a quick look at the parts. Start off with the decals. These are suffering the usual fading effects. I'm really not sure how these are going to work out. Not sure at all. So I hope the stripes stay together. But this integration won't entirely surprise me. But I have been on quite a few occasions quite pleasantly surprised. The main thing is they're not trying to do too long a continuous line. So they're not so long that they're going to be well, they're going to be tricky to manipulate. But not horrendously so. Which is a nice touch. Also it's less crowded than a lot of uh, A-model decal sheets I've seen. You've got room to cut things out rather than all the elements really squashed in together. So that's nice. Also, if you're doing a display base, the fact that you've got the name on there is also appreciated. Hopefully that will stay together, so if you allocate a bit of space, you can have the Burt Rutten Voyager uh, lettering on your base. Let's take a look at what we get. Uh, wings. These are single-piece wings. Fair bit of flash so that's going to have to be cleared off on the uh, trailing edges there. And on the leading edge, uh, on that side, um, the cockpit house, as always, you have these really thick, heavy A model sprues. Um, the props really need some cleaning up work. Well, a bit. They just seem to be a bit indistinct. They have quite a high or pronounced. Um, pitch angle which is interesting um, it's also showing signs now I've seen this before with a model kits of that likely there was a mix in the plastic because these are quite dirty components one might need a white with surgical spirit or something like that very thick as well the other booms and the forward flying surfaces the undercarriage, single piece undercarriage details, wheel well details. Then the, the base combines the glazing. The glazing is thick and not in the best of condition, but it's certainly usable. It's not as bad as some I've seen. Uh, some people may want to replace this with um, clear fix uh, all that stuff mine is dried up so I'm going to have to use these windows as they are if you put any cockpit detail in there it's going to be difficult to see much it really is but I think some ought to be done nice to see a nice little display stand though but I think something on a wooden base and longer it just means that you can put it on the shelf and it sits well above your other models and what I've got here is had a rummage in the spares and with a little bit of conversion work chopping and bringing together I may you know sand off the helmet just a couple of figures or at least one figure to pop in there uh, to represent uh, <sighs> Dick, uh, not Rotten, Charles Ye uh Nancy Yeager, and the uh, the two crew. Sorry, I just had a brain fart and can't remember it. But this will be just to help fill it up. Um, they sat quite laid back in the seat, so these are going to need a fair bit of surgery. But there's a couple of figures there that can give me something to work with to create a little bit of interest to pop in the cockpit. So that's the basic um, unboxing. Shouldn't be too many unpleasant surprises with this, but it's an A model kit, so you can never be entirely sure what's going to happen. But I'm not anticipating too much. We'll need a fair bit of filler. Plastic's nice and thick. And this is certainly an original and interesting aircraft. So that's 
the unboxing for the Rotten Voyager which is going to be my next build I think this is one of those rocking horse shit kits it's going to be incredibly difficult to find really is if you're looking for one of these now but I would strongly suggest if you want it may well be available in resin though I can certainly see this being popular in one 144 scale and it was sorry it was Dick Rattan and Jenna Yeager were the two crew in uh, and uh, it flew around the uh, world in 14th of December 14th to 15th of December 1986 it now hangs in a uh, US museum so that's what we have and this is going to prove fun. A little update on the Rotten Voyager. Running a bit slower on this one. Um, it's not much done on it during the week. This weekend, to be honest. Um, so I invariably added more time to the job by scratch building a cockpit, which a I ain't gonna see so you really with the thick glazing and everything else cannot see hide no hair in there but you've got a pilot figure so you've got a head showing a little imitation of his sea rough looked at some reference drawings um, the co-pilots mat where they lay down when they were uh, when it's um, when they swapped over and looking at the images you just sort of see a pilot's head sort of poking up but none of what I put inside there especially not I was quite chuffed with the instrument panel um, can you see oh. so in fairly typical fashion I'm adding to the job but anyway coming along uh, filled sanded to sponsons they are different shapes, unfortunately, and this is going to need a bit of work. You can see the uh, difference in the front ends. And this one's going to need quite a bit of reshaping. And I, I suppose the drawing... I suspect they may not have been strictly symmetrical though. Um, when you look at some of the photos, it, one certainly does look fatter than the other. So this may not be entirely incorrect. Uh, so this is going to be closed up soon. And then we're just going with the rest of the assembly. Well, a whole load of filling and sanding in this case, particularly along this seam here. Um, I put in a bit of brass tube, well, sorry, it's aluminium tube, super glued it in place so that it will take some rod for the flight stand. Now, this is going to be in a flight condition, it just seems this is an aircraft that belongs in the sky, so that's going to be popped in there. And that'll probably be cut to about this length. Which also means that when I put it on the shelf, it, it won't interfere with the shelf above, but sits comfortably above the aircraft uh, on the shelf. So, that's where we are. Having fun with it, just going a bit slow. So, this is the completed Rotten Voyager. Now, I should have got this done a little while ago I should have got this video done so this has been sh already sat on the shelf for a while uh, another A model kit and certainly one that if you do find it get it but you will need to look at the reference photos decals sufficiently better than um, the uh, some other A model kits but their placement in the instructions is very vague 
the work I did on creating a little bit of an interior, what a complete and utter waste of bloody time. Um, so, especially the pilot trying to get him, it just looks like a little blob there. Uh, yeah, okay. His head required an awful lot of filing down to fit under the canopy. And vaguely, you can maybe make out that there is a guy under there, but he looks like he's wearing a bike cyclist helmet. Uh, decal placement in the instructions is pretty vague, and you really do need to look at uh, reference uh, pictures. Aircraft, in my mind, that really does belong on a flying base. So I found a little bit of San Francisco Bay with a road work leading with a road leading up to um, Golden Gate Bridge. I did manage to stuff up the edge here, so that's why I painted more of the area blue. But that's sort of the Golden Gate Bridge is over in that direction, uh, considering it sort of flew headed out over the Pacific on that sort of path. That sort of feels appropriate. Um, This is a significant aircraft from the aviation enthusiast point of view. And I think on that grounds alone, if you see it, get this. If it's a kit that becomes available, it's well worth getting in my mind. Are you going to have the challenges with it? Well, if you built a few A model kits, this one is relatively, you kind of know what to expect and what to cope with and how to manage it. Um, Get a few of their, their kits under your belt. Just realize a few things. This isn't a symmetric. This is a bit asymmetric on the sponsons here. Um, and, uh, oh, God. Yeah. And much to my utter horror, I discover that, like so many A model kits, like my last one, the decals are a bit of a weak point on this. Um... So if you deal with their placement issues, you'll be okay. Um, but they are fragile and difficult to locate. But anyway, overall, I'm happy with it. I like the way it's displayed. The prop discs seem to work for this. Um, I think they're worth a detail worth adding. The undercarriage doors fit pretty appallingly on it. Um, so maybe it does look better if it's on its wheels, but that said, it's going to take up quite a lot of space, at least if it's on a stand, it can sit above other aircraft. That's a good reason. Or build it as a ceiling hanger. You know, if you can hang something from ceilings, this is a kind of aircraft that looks right. I mean, it's, well, I'm expanding, it's in the National Aerospace Museum in Washington or somewhere important like that hanging from the ceiling or museum of flight and uh it's ended its days after its amazing around the world flight as a ceiling hanger and i think this in your own man cave modeling area wherever in your shed this makes for a good ceiling hanger so fascinating aircraft amazing story behind it um well worth getting and well worth building um you are going to have fit issues invariably you're going to have shape and form issues um you could leave the wing tips off bearing in mind they came off during the takeoff of its round the world flight because they were dragging on the ground but they decided to carry on and still managed it um read the story behind it the story of their epic journey and what led up to it and the work of um but rotten and uh i like it i like its looks and yeah okay uh a model decals you, you just gotta deal with them or find aftermarket if you can uh that's where we are uh you need to layer up the white for sure get a good few layers of paint on uh, to get the decent finish a lot of filling and sanding along the fuselage sides because of the way it's split uh, they do justify a lot of work there once you get that sorted it's not too bad that's the main issue i would say with it and on along the um, joint for the two sponsors that does require a lot of filling and sanding the rest of it not so much um 
So, as I said, if you can find it, definitely find it. I think it's a worthwhile uh, aircraft for anybody's collection. It looks unique, um, and that in a, a, alone makes it worth it. Honestly, I, I wouldn't bother doing the cockpit detailing up because you can't see anything inside the thing anyway and that little tiny little bubble canopy but I think aircraft if I understand need a pilot in them how far you decide to go with it what you decide to use maybe a um, a Fala figure rather than a reworking a 172nd scale figure might be a uh, or a Mar uh, seated figure uh, from the Mar uh, range of uh, railway scenics might be a better idea than dicking about with a 172nd scale figure to pop in then the chopping about you have to do so I think it's worthwhile putting the pilot in but bearing in mind that bubble is very thick um, so yeah and I could have probably used something a bit thinner for the prop discs as well because they were a bit of a bugger to cut but that's just what I happen to have so this is like two mil thick, one and a half mil thick uh, plastic card, maybe half, half mil thick. Uh, clear uh, plastic would be a much better option and easier to do as well. So that's the A model 172nd scale uh, Rotten Voyager.